In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to copy color grades from your favorite movies. So this is a still shot from All Quiet on the Western Front. It's a really good war movie. And this is our portrait. And what I've done is basically copied the colors onto this. So if I come back to the start, that's the original. And then as you can see here, this has the same colors. So first thing to, to note is that obviously this is shot outside. So there's lots of light, it's very clean. And ours was shot in the studio. So that's the only difference is the lighting. The lighting is different, but the colors are exactly the same. So I'm gonna walk you through this process and show you how to do it. So the first thing you want to do then is come up to file and then select export and save for web legacy. So this will pop up and basically this is a color table of all the colors that are in this particular image. And all we need to do is select a few different colors. We don't need all of them. First thing we want to do though is come up to the color redemption algorithm and we want to select custom. And then where it says colors, we've got 256. We want to select anywhere between three and 10. It's entirely up to you. So if we select three, you can see there that actually we're losing a lot of colors. So I'm going to select a few more. So there's five and let's select eight. I think eight probably is a good start. That gives us a, a, a real variation of colors. But usually this can work anywhere from three upwards. So once we've done that, click on this little color palette menu here and then we want to select save color table and then you just want to save this anywhere on your computer so I've made uh, a folder there I'm going to create a new folder I'm going to call this uh, movie colors click create and then select save so once you've done that all you need to do is just click done so now we want to head over to our image I'm just going to reset this as well. There we go. So what we will now want to do is we want to create a gradient map. So click on your layers, come down to the bottom here and select gradient map. So gradient map will pop up and yours could be any of these. It really doesn't matter. So just select uh, the first one that's, that's there. Just double click on it and you'll see that the gradient map will be displayed here at the bottom. So this enables us to input colors into our picture. So from there, what we need to do is basically load up our swatches. So our swatches are all the different colors within the image. So yours will probably come up something like this. And what we need to do is load up them colors that we just got from our image. If you can't see your swatches, then all you need to do is go to Window and then come down to Swatches there and it will open up. So we click on the little lines at the top here and then we want to select import swatches and then we just want to find the folder with our colors in and here it is it's a c lut so it's a color lut click open and then it's just appeared here so this is where our swatches are now going to be and there's our colors there that we selected from our image now what we need to do is add these into our gradient map. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to here. This is the black. So I'm going to click on the little square and then where it says color, I'm going to click on there and then I'm going to come up to this dark color, click on it. And then what I'm going to take note of is the brightness. So we've got hue, saturation and brightness and it says 20%. So I'm going to remember that click OK and where it says location, I'm just going to type in 20. That's going to give us the correct color. So I'm then going to add a, another square here. So I'm just going to click and then click on color again. And then I'm going to select the next color, which is there. And again, taking note, brightness is 54. So press OK and then type in 54. And then I'm going to do the same again. Just make another selection there. Click on the color. Select the next color along. Brightness is 59%. Say OK. Type in 59. And then the final one is down here. I'm going to click on the color again. Select that. And this one is brightness of 88%. So I'm going to say OK. 88%. So that's now added 
them four colors that we got from our other image into this. Now, obviously it doesn't look perfect yet, but this is the, the tones of the colors. So we're gonna say okay to that. So we can click on the little X button here just to get rid of that gradient. Now what we need to do is we just need to change the layer. So let's come down and we can either select soft light or we can select color. And it really comes down to the image. Soft light or color will usually be the best choice. So in this instance, we can see that soft light looks better than color. So I'm going to select soft light. And you can see already that we've actually got quite a close comparison to our image. Remembering that obviously this is shot in the studio, this is outside. So it is different lighting, but you can see that there is quite a strong similarity there with these tones. So we've actually inputted these tones into our shot. Now there's a, a step we can go a little bit further just to really match these colors and make it look even better. So what we want to do is we want to come to our original image and we want to select the eyedropper, which is eye on the keyboard, the short key. And we want to select three tones. So we want to select the darkest, the brightest, and then the mid-tone. So Let's go ahead with the darkest point, which is probably around there. So it's going to be black. I'm just going to press B for brush, and I'm just going to paint on the side of the image there. So that's our darkest point. Our what brightest point would obviously be these whites up here, but I, I don't want to select that because because we, we're, we're playing with colors, white is obviously going to be in a tone. It's going to be the very, very brightest tone. So what I'm looking for is something that's closest to that as possible. And I would say it's around here. So it's kind of this area here that gives us uh, the next best point to, to bright white. So again, I'm going to press I for the eye dropper. Click, make a selection, press B for the brush tool. And I'm just going to paint there we go so now what i want to look for is a mid-tone so a mid-tone that's within the image so somewhere that is a, an average now there is more complicated ways to do this you can use different things to to get the exact mid-tone but you don't necessarily need to do that in my opinion to get something that's uh, average so i would say around there is pretty good so just selected the skin tones there and there we go. So that is probably our average. So we've got our average, our bright and then our dark. Okay. So now we've done that, what we want to do is we want to copy these and we want to input them into our image. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here and I'm going to select a curves adjustment. Now what we can do here is actually input them colors into these areas. So we've got the blacks, the midtones, and the whites. So all we need to do is copy them colors and it will make our image look a, a little bit closer to, to this. So the first thing I want to do then is select this color here. So this is going to be our midtone, And you can see as I clicked there, it appeared at the top here. So I'm then going to click on this again which is our highlight, and then I'm going to click on the shadow. So we've got our three shades up there, okay? So let's jump back to our image, and let's then jump to our darks. So let's click on the little eye dropper up here, double click, and it will bring up our colors. So I'm then going to select that color, which is the black, and I'm going to say okay. Now it's going to ask you if you want to save the new target colors as defaults, you don't because you want to just use this for this image, not for all the other images that you're ever going to do. So we're going to select no. And then what I need to do is I need to tell Photoshop where is the darkest point on my image. So it's probably up here, isn't it? So let's click there. Now you can click around and you can try different areas and it will give you obviously different uh, variations. But we want to try and get it so that our image looks as much the same as this one. So I reckon about there, it's quite good. So let's move to the next one, which is our mid-tones. So again, let's double click. And we know that the mid-tones was this kind of skin texture here. So we're gonna click there. And we're gonna say, okay. 
and we're not going to use as default so say no and now we need to tell Photoshop where our midtones are so it was on skin wasn't it so let's try and find somewhere that works on the skin so I think around there maybe let's try somewhere down here that's more of a highlight so it's a bit of a game to just try and find somewhere that works so we can try some of the areas maybe in the darker areas and again it's always a good idea if you have got the reference image next to you as well so you can just have a look and just see and that actually looks pretty close doesn't it it's getting there it's pretty close but to get that perfect we just really need to take our time and just try to find this spot but I think that will do for now so let's do the final one which is the highlights so let's double click on the highlight and let's come to our highlight color here select that one say okay and note we don't want to keep that as a original so let's find the highlight area so this is going to be the most difficult one because it's going to obviously blow out everything so that is probably what it is the the highlight here on the helmet so that is probably about right so now what we need to do is just have a look and jump back and forth between our image so let's just drag this other image here so we've got them next to each other and this is a really good way so you can just literally click on the image and drag it and then you'll be able to have them next to each other and then you can really fine-tune it so let's go back to uh, let's go back to this color here which is our midtones. So let's have a look, see if we can get this a little bit better. And again, I'm referring back to the original images outside. So there is a lot more, a lot more outside. Uh, there's a lot more light. I think that actually sits quite well now. That looks pretty good. The black is going to be pretty much black. It's got a little bit of blue in it. Um, we can see that and uh, yeah so I, I think that works pretty well so let's close that curve adjustment okay so let's come down to the bottom here and let's just make a levels adjustment and what I'm going to do is just bring these whites in a little bit just so it's a little bit darker because we have started to overexpose a little bit on there we could also bring the midtones down and remember that what I'm trying to do here is just copy the color tones. It's not going to look exactly the same because, as I've said multiple times, this is shot in the studio and this is outside. So you won't get it exact, but you'll get it close. So there we go. And we can always come back to these curves adjustments here if we wanted to. And we can continue making selections and just trying to find the perfect areas just to get these tones a little bit better so I think that that is okay for this tutorial that is okay so yeah that's how you do it that's how you copy the tones and colors from your favorite films onto your images um, and it yeah it takes a little while to really play around and to get the exact match but it is possible but just remember if you're going to copy colors then try and mimic the same image okay because you, you, you're going to you, otherwise you're never going to get the exact same result another thing you can do is that if you do find that you've uh, overexposed or underexposed certain things um, you can sorry come down to here and select a hue and saturation not a curves adjustment that I just done so come up to the saturation and you can click on master and you can then really work these colors here or you can just bring the saturation down of all the image and sometimes that helps so there we go that looks good so yeah that's how you do it I hope you've enjoyed that uh, have a play with your images and see how you get on but uh, it's a it's a real fun process and uh, yeah it's, it's one that can be a little bit time consuming but if you get it absolutely right it can look fantastic so I hope you enjoyed that take care and I'll see you in the next video bye bye